Greetings from Solvang, California. I'm Mary Beth Woodruff, the concertmaster of the Santa Maria Philharmonic, and we thought it might be uh, interesting to kind of see what a house full of three musician kids and myself have been doing during the quarantine. All of my teaching <laughs> has been going on on this computer and, and hours and hours. We were supposed to, in the month of July, be at Interlochen um, Center for the Arts in Michigan, where I was going to be teaching again after having not taught there for 20 years. Um, and of course everything was cancelled and I did Interlochen online instead. I think we're going to show a couple stills from that. Um, so I was teaching kids from all over the, the world. There was a, a boy from South Korea who had to show up at 2 in the morning to <laughs> the technique class that I was teaching every morning. Um, and there were kids from Utah and Indiana and from the Miami String Project in Florida and hearing their stories was incredible. The kids in Florida, due to the, the prevalence of the, the virus, had some of them not been out of their apartment building for something like three months. Um, so it was, it was just amazing to be, be connecting with them and in some cases the only you know, adult they'd been connecting with was their, their, their parents. Um, in the month of August, we were supposed to be in Vermont, where I was going to be playing concertmaster for two Wagner operas um, in, in Brattleboro, Vermont. And Aiden, my 15-year-old son, whom you will see playing a little bit later, was supposed to be playing those as well. So everything canceled. Um, yeah, we've tried to make the best of it and, and wanted to show you what that has consisted of. My eldest son is Aiden, who's 15, and he's a pianist and cellist, and you'll, you'll probably recognize him if you've been to our concerts this year because he was playing, um, I think, the entire season, starting when he was 14, he's 15 now. Um, he hopes to be a classical cellist, so um, not being able to play with others for this amount of time is, is a pretty serious deal when you're a high school cellist and it's, it's uh, akin to being uh, you know, going into the world of being a professional athlete and that you really have to be careful with the, the, the training that goes on. My next son is Henry, who's a 12-year-old, and he is a violinist and pianist. And my youngest is Claire, who is a pianist and violinist. Um, so you'll hear a lot of different styles played today. Aiden and Henry play in a fiddle mando ensemble that we call the Woodruff Mountain Boys. Um, and they play farmers markets, they've played some online shows, they've played some concerts they've been hired for, um, and have a lot of fun with, with that stuff. But this is the basic setup that's that's been going on. It's, it was really tough in the beginning to adjust to this, especially to teach the violin this way, because especially young violinists are moving targets, <laughs> so to get them to stand in one place, and even figure out how to tune their violins over a screen was was really really difficult but the the persistence and the resilience that i have seen is sort of the lesson in and of itself for for me as their their teacher and how much i feel i've i've learned Thank you. 
to attempt to show you what it is like when we're first learning a piece. And um, this is a piece by Corelli called a trio sonata and is some of the earliest chamber music ever written, which I think is really cool to, to see. We have, of course, later on the Haydn quartets, the Mozart quartets, everything that came thereafter. But this is sort of the beginning of it and it's a really pure sound. Um, the harmonies are just kind of naked <laughs> with, with little on top of them. I mean, there's some beautiful melodies, but it's basically counterpoint. And, and rhythm. So we're just going to kind of show you briefly how we would rehearse this and then we're going to perform it. And these guys have not seen this music before today. Um, so it will be a little bit raw, but we thought it would be more interesting than, than uh, showing something completely polished. Right guys? Right, what do you guys think of tempo? Does it seem a little slow? No, yeah. I think it seems a little too grave. Like we don't want it to be in the grave kind of grave, but <laughs> grave. The three and Good. And so listen for the harmonies, listen for the violins, how we don't change at the same time. That's what creates the dissonance, um, which is an, uh, incredible. I mean, there's an incredible analogy there with, with dissonance that is happening on the planet right now, I think, and, <laughs> and our time yeah. being paralyzed and delayed. And in this case, it shows extreme beauty that happens when we are forced to sit on something and not move on it. Let's try it again, just the beginning. Three and four. Beautiful. And then I love this this bar. Josh, if you can show this bar. Has no music written in it for anybody. <laughs> so it's a grand pause sort of before it's time in Baroque music where we just sit there. Again, this idea of being kind of paralyzed right now. I love that you find it right there in this Corelli Trio Sonata. <laughs> called an alamanda and we're chasing each other the whole time which means it's very tricky for us to stay together <laughs>
next move is another grave. So this is, is basically slow, fast, slow, fast. Oh boy, the mascot has arrived. <laughs> okay, let's go to this next grave. Ready guys? Three, four. Do family interview and put each other on the spot and ask questions of each other about what's been going on in our household during the quarantine and I have no idea what they're going to say so um, for, forgive our spontaneity for whatever comes out. Henry, I'll start with you. Okay. So name for me um, one of your favorite things we had done during the quarantine that we would not have done had not we been in this situation? Well, I think during the quarantine we are getting a lot of different family time instead because everyone's usually out of the house at times. Like some of us are at school or you're teaching a lesson or dad's at work, players over at some friend's house. So that's one thing that re comes out in quarantine. Like everyone is together. That's a really good point. And name either your favorite composer or favorite piece that you've played during the quarantine because you guys have learned a lot of music. My this favorite time. composer is Beethoven. Yes? Did yeah. you play anything by him? Uh, no, I haven't not. But in piano, before quarantine, I started the Beethoven piece that I played, that I continued during quarantine. Yeah, we may show a clip of that too. So he played a Beethoven sonata that he actually finished up at the very beginning of the quarantine. It was very uh, profound for us in that it was the last piece his teacher assigned him before she passed away in January. So he was able to complete that, that piece um, in April, and we may show a little little clip of that. I have a question, Claire. I've realized that you have been petting cats more than practicing. I would like to know on a, um, about how many hours you've spent petting the cats. I think I've pet the nice cats um, for at least more than half of my days. In conclusion, Claire might have pet cats a little bit more than she's practiced her instruments over the quarantine. Is that, is that the leading yeah. question you were after? Yeah. Your Honor? Yes. Cool. So my question for Aiden is a little bit loaded because I kind of already know the answer, but I really think it would be neat for our San Maria Phil patrons to hear this. Tell us today why your fingers are hurting, and it was very difficult for you to play while we were recording. Well. My fingers are hurting because I went spearfishing this morning and I was dealing with very spiny fish and spiny sea urchins, which kind of left a lot of little holes, so it kind of stings when I play. How do you procure these wonderful fruits of the sea? Oh, I just go out there with a spear gun and my snorkel and mask and I go free diving for them. So Aiden is a pretty obsessive spear fisherman, and that's something he's done a lot over the, the quarantine. Okay, so... Nice microphone. Oh yeah, thanks. So I've um, seen how much you've been cooking, and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Well, um, what's the most funnest um, thing that you've cooked in the quarantine? During the quarantine. Grammar has sort of gone by the wayside in the quarantine. Most funnest, that was, that was amazing. Uh, I was thinking about that today. I mean, we started out the beginning, you might as well show the bread. Yeah, this was the, the uh, 
end of what we showed yesterday of my starter and everything else. So I indeed baked a lot of bread. But we started out the quarantine, I think we were on a creme brulee binge. Do you remember that? No. We were. We oh. were. We were. We made creme brulee for like a week and a half straight and delivered it to our, our neighbors, Andrew and Day, who are going to pop up in one of the, the segments here. Uh, yeah, we've done chicken tikka masala. We've sort of been all around the world. Since we can't travel, we figured we might as well cook from all over the world. We planted a garden as well, so that's a good question. Claire and Henry are going to play a piece by Bela Bartok called Pillow Dance. So Bartok went into the wilds of Transylvania and Romania and recorded the gypsies and the uh, tribal people outside the city playing various folk songs. And this one is a pillow dance. We like to call it a pillow fight though. So it's, it's a great teaching piece. Um, and they're going to demonstrate to you what we during the piece call the whacking of the sibling with the pillow. So Henry, can you show us yours? Can you show us yours, Claire? So look for that in the piece, and this is Bela Bartok's Pillow Dance. Okay, do you want to play uh, Crooked Still? Okay, that's good. Groom Polka. Uh, this is dedicated to our neighbors Andrew and Day, who often pop up while we're playing because we're loud. Hey! <laughs> what are you guys doing? and whatever other adjectives come, come to mind. Um, we had a lot of fun making this for everybody. Uh, we are beyond appreciative for the Santa Maria Philharmonic Board of Directors and our, our executive director and of course Michael Novak is just amazing in forging ahead in this, this new territory for, for all of us. I, I mean, you're gonna see some really great uh, films coming up, these, these first Fridays at four that are, are happening. Um, in which the different sections of the orchestra are highlighted. Um, hard to say how much I miss playing for an audience. I have to not talk about it because it's it's that hard. Um, 
and I get rather emotional about that. It will happen eventually and it is, it is my hope that we are finally back together again. It is with more appreciation and more gratitude for what music does for all of us and how it connects humanity. Thanks. Thank you.